what we're going to do is have the player attack. He's going to hit the enemy for, for 10 points. It's going to knock down the, the enemy uh, by 100, from 100 down 10 points, so he's going to have 90. So we have to give the player the ability to do something again. Now, if we give him the ability to do something again, we want to give him the same actions, right? So how are we going to get this all to come back again after after we do this? Well, you can, uh, let's say, copy and paste this whole entire part and put it here, and then here, and here, and here. And then as you can see, I now have uh, multiple parts, which are kind of erring here because I can't redefine player's action. So I could reuse the variable if I get rid of the name. So that would be how I fix those. But right now, what I did was I hard coded by, by typing this in, in this code. It will have to happen. I think I did it. I, I pasted it a set of, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, five times. You will have exactly five attacks. If you manage to kill him on the second attack, you're still attacking this guy three more times, but he's already dead because I hard coded it to be four, I mean five times to happen. We don't want that to happen. And not only that, but if you decided now that I don't want option three to be defend, I have to change this defend and score up to this defend, the code becomes unruly. You can't, you can't have every single possible option in a game be written out like that. So what we're going to do instead is do loops to kind of show uh, a major part of programming because you want to use you want to reuse your code as much as possible you, if you're if you're writing duplicate code there's probably something you're doing wrong that you can modify to change a little bit because you don't want to write duplicate code if you write duplicate code you can't maintain it and while you're while you're starting out it might be okay but if you ever do any project the if you do duplicate code and then the deeper you get in you have to make a change or something happens uh, parameters change etc you won't be able to make that change as easily and then now you get stuck because you coded it weird from the beginning so here in this case I want to write out what has happened read in the players action and then tell them what they chose so in this case before I encounter my first enemy. I'm going to create a variable to track if the first enemy is dead. So this is a boolean because it's true or false. I'm going to say is first enemy dead. So is the first enemy dead? Right now the first enemy is not dead. It is false. The first enemy is not dead. So right now I'm going to show a while loop so for this for this portion right here where I read the line and I do all this ifs right here I'm going to put that in a while loop so what a while loop is is again like I like I recommend uh, for most of these uh, built-in statements if you type in while you get the ability to hit tab tab and I'll write it out for you but if you wanted to write it yourself it's while and then the parentheses, and then this, the inside the parentheses has to be a boolean, and then squiggly squiggly. So we're saying while this thing inside is true, the equation in here is true, run the code in here. So it's going to check if it's uh, true. It's going to come in here, and then it's going to run this code. When the code ends and it gets to this squiggly, it's going to go back up here and check is this still true, and if not, uh, if it I mean if it is true, it'll still run. It's going to keep running this over and over and over and over again until it's not true anymore. Okay, so at this point, we have the while loop. The whatever is true here, while this is true, we're going to continue to run what's inside the while loop. So in this case, we're saying while the player, uh, while the the first enemy is not dead, we're going to continue to repeat the code. So if here, if I put this boolean here, this boolean right now is false, it will never run this code because the uh, first enemy 
is not dead. So this results to false. And so if I was to just say like what this is, at the moment it is false, so it does not run. You do not get inside here. So if you want uh, to put an exclamation mark in front of a Boolean, you say take whatever this is and make it what the opposite value is. So this is also, as you saw before when I said does not equal, with the, with the sign does not equal uh, with the exclamation mark, that exclamation mark uh, shows use the opposite. So in this case, if we were going to say it, we're saying while this enemy is not dead. Because like, is the first enemy dead? Like, well, is he not dead? This, like, I guess the way I word it is a, a little weird. But we're saying like, is, is this first enemy dead? And at the opposite of that. So uh, while the enemy is not dead, we're going to run. So when the enemy does become dead, this is going to turn to true which will make this true. And while we're saying while not true, which would be the opposite of true, which is false, so then we would not run this anymore. So we don't want to run this because the enemy's dead. So it kind of makes sense English wise, but I'm not sure if I named the variable good to kind of show that. Variable naming is very important. It kind of helps you track things and uh, make sure you can follow the code. So I'm going to cut all of this code here, you know, right click and cut, which or you can do control X. And I'm going to put that inside of this while loop. I'm going to do control V for paste. So I'm going to say while the first enemy is not dead, repeat the attack or the player cycle. Play a little cycle. So now, while the, the, the first enemy is not dead, uh, you can do this will go on forever. And we can see here, since we never change is the first enemy dead, it will never actually come up and, and get out of there. So here, David, so I'm going to say, up, oh, it stopped immediately. While, is first enemy dead? Oh, because I, I I changed it, I changed it to true before. Uh, in my example, it should be false. So now we're, now we're good. We're good again. Back. Okay. What is your name? David. So I'm going to say do a single attack, as you chose the single attack. Uh, now I get get to choose again. So I'm going to do three, uh, you know, three strike attack. And then I'm just going to. You can see it's going to go on forever until the enemy is dead. It's going to keep repeating. But since I'm not, I never change it, it's going to go on forever. So, just to kind of show how it, it'll be if it stops, I can make another if statement here that if uh, player's action equals equals I'm gonna say kill just to be cheating I can say is the first enemy player dead equals true then you'll see that I can attack 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 the moment I say kill he dies because I left the while loop and then the code continues so this concludes uh, this segment of the game where we learned if statements and uh, while loops the while loops allow you to continue code while something is true. Like keep running this while this is true. And the if statements allow you to branch your code like if this is true, do this, else do this. Or if this is true, else if this is true, else if this is true, else, and then can you kind of continue that way. So this allows you to branch your code so it isn't always doing one thing when the code executes from top to bottom. Next time we're gonna be learning how to do objects and we're going to create uh, objects and classes and we're going to create a uh, player class and an enemy class. And what this uh, allows us to do is create a player to track the player's health and what attacks he can do, etc., and the enemy and his health. And I'll show you how inheritance works between enemies and the boss character. Uh, so thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.